Would you like to use your Commodore 64 on your network, stream videos and audios to your PC, FTP, do BBS? All of that's coming up. Stick around. Let's go. Let's go into the world. Hi, everyone. Shane Armand Rowe here. The first thing we're going to do is go to network services. Do yourself a favor. Set your host name to something not so long and not so cryptic. This works for me. Now, if you're going to use FTP later, let's enable that and try enabling web remote control service. That's fun, too. Make sure you set your time zone. Sometimes weird things happen if you don't set your time zone right. All right. Now that we've done that, let's set up our Wi-Fi. Now, you've probably already done this, but if you haven't, let's walk through it real quick. So obviously you pick your access point, type in your password, all that good stuff, and uh, you'll get an IP address. If you don't see one, go back and come back in. Now you can see at the bottom that I have an IP address assigned and I'm connected to Monroe World, which is my Wi-Fi router. Now, don't pay attention to these numbers down here underneath enabled. Those aren't real numbers unless you disable DHCP. That threw me for a little bit. So your static IP is really .250 in this case, not the other number you saw. All right, now I recommend that you go into your router right now, go to your DHCP server and permanently assign a uh, IP address to your Commodore 64. It's gonna make a lot of sense in a minute. What you can get off of this usually is your default gateway. Write that down. We're gonna, I'm keeping a little notepad here. This shows your address pool. Uh, and so down here, you can see I'd already set up my Commodore 64 with the reserved IP address of .250. That means every time my Commodore comes onto my network, it always gets the same IP address. This is going to be useful for FTP and other stuff. Even though you can use a host name, host names don't always work across networks, right? So here's the list of stuff that I've got so far. I've got my fixed IP address. I got my gateway, your DNS, if it's something other than Google, 8888 is Google. And then your OBS, or that's your PC's IP address. And if you don't have that yet, we're going to get that later if you plan to do some streaming. All right. So now, now that FTP is set up, you can use whatever you want. You could use the built-in file manager, not my favorite. You could use FileZilla if you happen to be handy with that. Just FTP on over to that IP address or that host name. Of course, I'm using Directory Opus World's Greatest File Manager, and I can actually set that up with a button, all sorts of fun stuff. So I'm excited. So now I can access everything, Flash, uh, Temp, as well, of course, as any storage devices that are on the machine. Move files over, copy files back, whatever you need to do. Okay, if you go to that IP address in your web browser, look at this. There's actually all sorts of fun stuff you can do here. I bet a lot of other YouTubers aren't showing you this because this is pretty cool. So we have a SID player here. You can actually load a SID file from your PC, right? I'm going to pick one off my PC. Uh, that one sounds good. And then I'm going to hit play. And over on my 64, there's no one touching anything. The SID just starts. That's pretty cool. So you can have like a remote SID jukebox you can run from your PC. You can also reset the machine from here, all right? Quick reset or do a reboot. If you want to do a full blown reboot of the machine, there you go. And uh, yeah, you can even access the menu button from here. That's pretty dang cool. Now, something else you can do that I think is kind of fun is execute a PRG or CRT. Now you'll notice it doesn't say D64, G64, D71. It only works with PRGs or CRTs. Trust me, I tried. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, throw a CRT on here and we'll choose Archon and we'll run it. The CRT gets popped over there and executed and bam, you've got Archon playing. I don't know why you'd wanna do that, but it's still cool, right? You can even do this, get this. You can actually type in basic code or paste it in here and then send it over to the machine and uh, you can actually see what's going on with the code. You can actually just push the code over. Check this out, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna put some stuff in here and then I'm gonna hit the button. I'm gonna go over to my Commodore and look, there it is. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure what I would do with it. Maybe cutting and pasting basic programs out of a magazine or something, eh, I don't know. All right, so now if you wanna stream an OBS, we're gonna assume that you have OBS all set up. I will not teach you how to set up OBS. Just assume that we have OBS set up. Go to commodore.net slash downloads. This is where the plugin for OBS is. Down at the bottom at the time of this video, you'll see a link to click. This will take you to a GitHub. As with all GitHubs, right? It looks a little bit daunting and confusing. You're just gonna to wanna to run over there to the right-hand column where it says releases, right? Click on that. And then the very top one, that assets may be collapsed if it's 
not collapsed, you know, you're fine. Otherwise, uncollapse it and then grab the Windows X64. We'll save that off, right? The zip file. Of course, we have to extract the zip file because that's what you do with zip files. Use WinRAR, whatever you want to use. All right, great. So now inside there, there should be a C64 folder and inside of that should be a bin and a data folder. So that's exactly what we want to see. That all looks good. Now, where you want to put that is inside of this special location, program data slash OBS underscore studio. This is where plugins go. Now, you may or may not have a plugins folder. If you don't have a plugins folder, make one. And then you can copy that C64 stream right on in there. Perfect. There it is. Bin and data is right underneath that C64. Awesome. All right. It's pretty easy, right? Now we're going to run OBS. And we are going to add a source. And you can see right here, you now have C64 stream. Neat. All right. So uh, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, streaming. Okay. So now we have to take a look at some properties here. So uh, yeah, you're not seeing anything here. That's okay for now. Um, so the first thing you want to look at is your OBS IP address. And that's that uh, address for your PC. Uh, we need your... Um, gateway right there so your dns server ip your gateway and then use your host name or i recommend as always use the ip address just saves trouble down the road all right so we've got everything in here the rest of this stuff is things you can play with on your own i just want to get it working for you if you don't see the little commodore window in here yet reboot and then you'll see the little commodore window how cool is that all right, now when you go to stream, you have to use wired ethernet. You cannot use Wi-Fi. In fact, you need to disable Wi-Fi when streaming. Otherwise, you're gonna get some weird cryptic message. You're not gonna have a clue what's going on. It took me forever to figure out what was going on. All right, so we're gonna hit F2. We're gonna go into data streams. We're going to set our default OBS IP in here, which is of course the PC that you're streaming to. In my case, dot .94, perfect. And we'll do the same thing. So you can actually just ship over video, just ship over audio or do both, but you have to start them both separately, which you'll see in just a minute. All right, so now I've got it all saved up. Oh, look at that. There's my Commodore 64 right there. Okay, I'm gonna start streaming. Boom, there it is. Wow, how easy is that, right? Now I'm also going to start streaming audio, even though you won't hear it, uh, but I'm gonna stream audio and video. Nice. All right, so now we're all synced up here. Pretty cool. Now I'm going to go grab a, I don't know, a globe demo or something, just a little something to show that it works. I'll clip out a whole bunch of the loading time and stuff and the depacking, just so you can see it running. Right. So if you want to capture Commodore 64 video, you don't need an expensive capture card or anything like that. Unlike that one I got over there on the Commodore 64, you can just use OBS. All right. So let's see what else we can do. Commoserve. Once you're online, you can use Commoserve, which is sort of a file repo. We've talked about this on other videos, but you can search for apps, you can search for games, download them locally onto your C64 and uh, play them that way, right? So there's some games you can pick up. Pretty cool. All right. So we've got FTP, we've got streaming, we got the web, we got Commoserve, but of course we have one more thing to look at and that is BBS usage. So if you go to the uh, cassette USB drive that came with your system, if you go under BBS, you're going to go into um, ultimate term, run the config file first, just like it says, and then run ultimate term D64. I'm not going to give you a comprehensive look. I just want you to see that it works, right? So we're going to say, hey, well, look, there's an IRC client too. That might be cool. We're going to do one for BBS client. IRC on the 64, that might be fun. I must try that later. All right, we're gonna load that guy up. Taking it sweet time. Don't I have Jiffy Doss in here? Maybe I don't. All right, so now there's the phone book. I guarantee a lot of these entries don't work. We're going to use one that happens to work, which is this very first one on the list. Wow, that just fires off so many neurons, I can't believe it. But look, there's Eliza, ChatGPT. There's even a basic browser, a text-based browser that you can use through here. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'd recommend it. It's uh, pretty primitive. I mean, let's take a look at it. That's really cool. But then when you actually get into the browser, you realize it only works with text and most websites don't even have a text version anymore. W3.org does. So there you go. That's kind of cool.
Well, listen, I hope this satisfied everybody's networking needs. If you enjoy what we're doing here, of course, leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all that sort of stuff. I'm so happy to be here with you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.